I'm trying to start as, as much on time as possible because I know our time is precious. Thank you all for coming to our uh, PTO general meeting um, this morning. We are, we've got some special guests this morning and we can flip to the next slide. So this is how it's going to go. Um, you've got the principal's report, then the vice president, membership, president. We're going to touch the Apex Fund one. We've got Carl McClendon here from, uh, to talk from the district to talk about Schoology. And then we'll adjourn and we'll have questions after. Did you sign in, Martha? Okay, so we need you to do a raffle ticket. We have a fabulous raffle also, so make sure everybody signed in and filled out a little ticket. It's a $25 district to Angels and a hat. So, yes, so that's what we are um, giving up. So, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Julie Richards, Mrs. Richards, to talk about the principal's report. Hello, welcome. We have the microphone so because we're recording this when we put it online, we know you guys can probably hear us, but we're so glad that you showed up today and you're going to get to learn about school to get right along with us. Um, I do have a couple things. One, I wanted to let you know, give you a heads up. Um, and if you get tired of talking, you've already seen this, but we will be having a, a costume parade on the 30th, which is the Friday before Halloween. Um, it is designed to be a costume parade as opposed to uh, like a scary Halloween kind of costume parade. So we are putting um, some parameters on it. I would encourage the kids to dress up like a book character. I'm not saying they have to, but I am saying it needs to be rated G. So it's not no weapons, no um, blood or gore or anything that's like death depicting. So no zombies or grim reapers or any of those things, okay? So let's just keep it friendly so that everybody, even our list, um, students, uh, can have fun with it and it won't be scary for anybody. So I appreciate your help on that. We will have a parade. If weather it has, it stays like it has been, we'll be walking outside around. So we'll be able to have um, plenty of places for parents to stand and watch. And if not, we'll do the parade inside and we'll make provisions for you to watch it as well. Okay, a couple of other things that I wanted to mention real quick. I hope that you get our Tiger Talks. If you don't, I really encourage you to sign up for that. I had a student come in today that said, um, how did I know it was Superhero Day? Why do all these people, these people dressed up as superhero? And I said, well, honey, does your mom get an email? And she, he said, no. And I said, okay, well, tell mom to sign up for emails. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow's Red, White, Blue Day, you know? So if you, we try and send information out as much as we can in multiple formats, but we always make sure that everything goes out in Tiger Talk because um, sometimes it's just a little quick reminder like that. So if you are not signed up for our emails, if you can go online and do that through the website, it's easy to do, and you get the, we've changed the format so it's easier to read on your phones. So um, hopefully you can do that. Also a remind, um, I send out a remind, there's a paper over here that tells how to do it. You just simply text to the number 81010, the words at WCHP for West Cypress Hills parents. And I just sent real quick reminders like about the PTO meetings today. I sent a reminder about Chili's night. Um, probably we'll send something out about the costumes, things like that. Just real quick thing, usually the night before. Okay. One thing I did want to tell you about as well. Last, I know if, you, if you've watched online or if you were happy to have been here, we had the director of the food and nutrition services come and talk to us about the FMNV food and mineral nutritional value law that we follow in the schools and the non-competitive food um, guidelines that we have. And so this year we are allowed, in the past we've been allowed to have three days that are exemption days, and those are our party days. And, and those stay the same this year as they have been, and that is right before the um, winter holiday, right um, close to Valentine's Day, and then what is one of the last full days of school. <coughs> Um, so we still have those as party days. We were given an opportunity to choose three additional exempt days. Now, I want to make sure that, that everybody understands it's not three additional party days. What it means is, on those three other days, there are days that the teacher can include things in their curriculum, in their teaching, that has to do with food. So for example, so we had to designate what those were. It wasn't just any teacher could pick three other days. It had to be campus-wide. So I talked to the staff, talked to the, our campus advisory team, and the dates we've come up with are um, October 30th, that is the day before Halloween. And the main reason we did that is because I know last year there were an awful lot of people that wanted to send something in, some kind of little something. Teachers might want to make spiders, was that marshmallows and you know, pretzels, things like that. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do that also includes food on that day. 
So it's not a party day, but I don't have to turn all that away like I did last year, which I felt like a real heel. People send me in these little tree bags, and I'm like, I'm sorry, you can't do it. Um, just because I have to follow the law. Um, 1120, which is um, the day before Thanksgiving break, because a lot of our class, or I think it's one of the days right before Thanksgiving break, a lot of our classes like to do some kind of a Thanksgiving feast and in their classroom. So there's still parameters that they have to do as far as it's not taking a place in lunch, but it doesn't allow for them to be able to do that. Um, if they want to do that or something else that goes with their curriculum that has to do with food. And then the other day is May 13th, which is just a day after all the star testing days. So that will be not really a party day, but it will be a day when they have some flexibility in what they do. They can allow food if there's something they want to do with that, okay? And those will be on our website too. We have to post those publicly. But again, we've got still got three party days, and those are the same. They're the day before winter holiday, the day before Valentine's, and it's actually ends up being like February 10th this year because of the professional development days that we have in there, and then one of the last days of school, which right now is scheduled for June 1st. Depending if we end up having to use bad weather days, that sometimes can get changed as we get closer to time, but right now that's what we have on the calendar, okay? Thanks for coming out. I know you're um, going to learn about some real practical things today as we have our guest here, so I'm gonna give it back to to Jessica so we can get going. And also, oh, is it Rhonda Sperling? Is your birthday today? Yes. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> Good morning. I just quickly want to uh, touch base. Last Friday, we invited in the Classroom Cupcake Coordinators and Home Room Parents to meet with LA Travis ISD Food and Nutrition Director Tracy Miller. And she just went over, uh, really gave us an overview of how some of the uh, changes to Cupcake Friday fits into the overall uh, picture for what the school district is going for for our food and nutrition. And if you would like to see that meeting, it has great information. It is on our website at wchpto.org. And I just would like to suggest people check it out because, it, like I said, it just really shows what we're trying to do on a healthier aspect. Well, they should get goodies, but also some good stuff too. So, thank you. Hello. How y'all doing? Um, I would like to invite everybody out. We have a principal's coffee um, for all of us at uh, West Side of Schools, and it's our community. So, if you get your calendars out, October 28th at 8 a.m. Ms. Richards is going to hold a very, very informal coffee where we can ask questions. Um, there will be some nuggets of how we can get involved. We're going to have a big emphasis on new families who have moved in, um, but we want everybody to be included. So if you are not necessarily a new uh, family coming in, um, we would love to have you there to maybe even answer questions um, and meet new people and get to know Julie Richards just a little bit more. Um, and I think in Tiger Talk, you'll have my email, so I will be the one that you'll be communicating with, and just let us know that you're going to come just so we can come here. Okay, so thank you. My turn. My turn. My turn. Okay. We have people coming in on three mornings in the lap um, Important dates. Chick-fil-A nights tonight. The signs are outside. Um, I want to emphasize gift cards. They count towards our 10%. So if you go to Chick fil A a lot, please consider buying a gift card because we get 10% of the gift cards back <laughs> twice a week. So that's another way of kind of um, boosting our sales. Tonight is, which I'm really excited, it is if you're down there, think about going to the Lake Travis Homecoming Parade, which is at Lake Travis High School. Um, that starts at 6 o'clock. So, and they put a lot of candy out and some other things going on. So that's another nice way of getting everybody downtown or down to the Lake White area. We have the Apex Fun Run on October 19th through the 30th. The theme this year is the Dream Team. And they, um, Dream stands for Dive In Resourcefulness, Evaluate Other, or Elevate Others. Elevate Others. Attitude Check. Elevate Others. Attitude Check. What was the last one? And make a difference. So they're going to come in for two weeks starting um, 
they actually the teachers huddle on Monday afternoon. The teachers will get to do all their challenges. We're going to have sonic drinks for them on Friday for the teachers and the staff, which is really exciting. The teachers love that because it's always nice to get a sonic drink at one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And um, they do different challenges for their class, and then the kids will get to vote on the principal's challenge, which will be we are changing the last day, which is the 30th, because we've got the costume parade in the morning. The assembly is going to be at 1.30 that day. So on October 30th, the fun run is actually on the 29th during your child's specials. So whenever your child, and it, the form did go out in the Tuesday folders, we will have it, it's already posted on the PTO website. It's also posted on the um, West Cypress Hills website with all the running times. We need people to mark the back of shirts. I will be sending out a sign up genius to help out marking the backs of shirts with the amount of laps. The maximum amount of laps that people get charged for are 36, which comes out to a little over two miles that the kids run. We're hoping to do it outside this year, because last year due to weather and mud, we had to move it into the gym, we still had a great time, but we're gonna be outside this year, fingers crossed. Um, but it's, this is our only major fundraiser of the year. So this is where, and the teachers get back 10% of what they collect per classroom. So this year, to give an example, third grade teacher, I'm just gonna call out Ms. Arbor, she got $309 in the game this year to spend on classroom supplies. She just had to submit receipts and we gave her a check for $309 for off of what she earned from her last year's class. So this year, the teachers will be getting their checks in December. So it's a great, a great thing. Um, we're really excited. The kickoff pep rally is October 20th at 1.30, and that's when the Apex team starts off. Character building lessons start off on the 20th, which is a Wednesday, I'm sorry, 21st, which is a Wednesday. And every day they'll be in the classroom for 15 minutes to give a lesson and to pump the kids up. In the front hallway, we have um, all the prizes the kids can earn. It's uh, we updated the glass case, so the Apex uh, Ken Wilkerson came last night and the prizes. So it kind of gives the kids a little bit of incentive. Um, and the prizes are um, educationally related as well as fitness related. They try to do a balance of both because it is a fitness program, a character building program. Of course, I'm sorry. Um, on that assembly, if you want to come to that awards assembly on the, on the 30th, the kids are also working on doing a flash mob during that assembly on that 30th, so it's going to be fun to see. So it's, it, we have so much going on <laughs> over the next couple of weeks. It is going to be and a lot of learning going on, but also a lot of fun things. So this is the one on the 30th. The 1.30 on October 30th, yes. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, last year, we brought in $30,000 off of Apex. That was income we brought to the school. That was after Apex took their cut. It is a 52-48 split because they provide three staff members here for the entire two weeks. They provide all the t-shirts for everybody. Every child gets a t-shirt if they get a pledge or not. Every child's included. All the staff members get t-shirts including the custodial staff, the, the cafeteria, every single staff member in the school gets t-shirts. So everybody's included. It's, it's just a phenomenal program. And we really find that the kids really enjoy it. We, saw, we were putting up the decorations yesterday, and all the kids were like, oh, Apex is coming back again. And then the kids that are new this year were asking, well, what is Apex? And the other kids were explaining, which is so nice to see other children explain how great of a program it is. So um, I'm excited for it. We've got box tops. I've got my ladies. Oh, yes, sir. So, one minute. Would you say one more time when is the flash mob? October 30th at 1.30. It is okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, we had a bunch of parents come last year. Yes. So that's the 20th at 1.30. 20th at 1.30. That's a two step. Yes. And then during race time, we ask parents to come and cheer on as well as mark shirts. So even if you just can only come for a little bit, it was great to see the kids. And we do have, I'll put another side note, we do have a chiropractor supplying all the water bottles this year. So they're going to hand out water bottles for the kids with the chiropractor's name on it. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's a great, um, it's a great way to 
get to see the kids and um, they're getting physical fitness as well as character building. So uh, we're just really thrilled with this fundraiser. And this is the only fundraiser we're doing this year. This, we're, we're done after this, school-wide, because it's, it's really important that we keep it to a minimum. Um, box tops, we made over $1,000 on Shadow Box Tops, so they are doing just before November 2nd. Um, just keep on sending them in. There is a purple bin behind Donna in the front office. Uh, we have ladies that are cutting them out, and they count them, and they check the expiration dates. So um, the more we get it If you can cut them out at full, that would be great. If you just rip them off, it's fine too. These ladies do cut. Yeah, they do cut them. Yeah, they cut. Because we pay for postage. So the, the least amount that they weigh. So we cut them around the dotted lines. Um, okay, next slide. I just wanted to review quickly. Apex brought in um, $30,000. This is what it went towards last year. So the PTO gave back to the school $45,597 last year, based off of fundraising. And $30,000 of that was APEX. We're hoping to exceed that $30,000 this year with APEX, so we don't have to sell chocolate or do any other, I know, any other fundraisers. So we have bought Raz Kids, which anywhere from K through second grade has used Raz Kids, Study Island. Um, we have, um, we bought, instead of, there's one change I've got to make on that, we ended up buying all Chromebooks instead of the iPads. The teachers utilized the Chromebooks more, so we spoke about it, and we got 37 Chromebooks the other day, and they're all touch screen. So the teachers were extremely excited about that. The classroom rugs, I know a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about the kids getting classroom rugs. So K through second, all got new classroom rugs. So it's really exciting, the kids are thrilled. Um, the teacher Apex fund run money, we gave back the teachers $5,661 to go to spend how they wanted to spend in their classrooms last year. For the new teachers, what we did to the teachers that did not come back, divided it amongst them, and each new teacher got $110 this year. So, and then they'll make their own money this year. Um, and then staff appreciation last year, we spent um, over $1,000 on staff appreciation. This year, the budget for staff appreciation, we have over 35, about $3,500 for staff appreciation. Um, and we just did a PTO lunch that was um, catered by La Camana. Primrose of BK gave us $300 towards that. Chick-fil-A did the sweet tea and the um, regular tea. So we got four gallons of tea from Chick-fil-A, and it was a great lunch, and the teachers really, really loved it. So it was a great way to, especially during conferences, that the teachers got to eat and didn't have to worry about going off campus or bringing their own food. So this is on our website, uh, all our accomplishments, um, and it's wchpto.org is our website. So that is, I think that's all I've done. Okay, this is just what I was trying to remember everything. The character building the attitude check. <laughs> The Apex stuff, it's every day. So how it works is, it's two weeks. So, yeah, so what we're gonna do is, Wednesday's gonna be dive, that's great, Wednesday's gonna be dive in, Thursday's gonna be resourceful, Friday is elevate others. So they do lessons in the classroom for 15 minutes in each classroom, and they show videos, and we're gonna have the video clips on the morning broadcast. And then Monday's gonna be attitude check, Tuesday's make a difference, then on Wednesday, they re-go through everything that they learned. And then Thursday's the run. And then Friday, we'll do the principal challenge at 1.30, plus the flash mob. We've got a lot going on. So, and last year, Julie did get slimed. I helped, her, I helped slime Julie. And we like to do that at the end of the day, because then she can go home. <laughs> um, and then the kids will have their own little challenges. They got, the Apex people got pie in the face last year. They were doing shaving the face pies and kind of the face, the last one too. It's a lot of fun for the kids. They really get into it. But they have they play dodgeball, which I don't think people call dodgeball, I know they call it something else. But they've done a lot of fun things when they've hit different challenges in their classroom. So it's a great it's a great program. Yes, and then the award ceremony they'll have a they'll have a really good time. And then the top class that brought in they get a trophy and then actually Miss Hughes has it this year and then she gets to pass it. So it's it's a lot of fun. And the teachers get really involved. It's a great, it's a great program. Okay. 
again, Apex. And then now I'm going to introduce um, Carl from London. He is from the district to talk to you about Schoology. Good morning. My name is Carl McClendon. I work in the Curriculum Instruction Department. Um, I am also a parent. I have two kids, 7th grade and 11th grade. I live out here in this community as well. My kids are too old to go to the PCH, but we live out here. Um, I'm going to show you Schoology, but before I get to Schoology, I'm going to actually try to show you some other resources that are available to you as a parent. So if you go to the school district website, a couple things I want to point out. For your children, we have a learning portal on any page, on any, any page on any site in the district, you will see this learning portal. This is a resource for your students. Okay? For parents, we have a resource related to learning technologies, and that's my job. I'm Told you that I'm the learning technologies coordinator. Okay, so this is a guide to learning technologies that we have created for parents. And so I wanted to show you that so you can help spread the word on this tool. So we talk about the next gen learner. I like to call it next gen civics. You guys are just talking about character education, digital citizenship. It's really big. Um, you all know this, but technology is here to stay. It has changed our lives immeasurably, and it's not going away. Therefore, we want to teach your children how to use it to learn and how to use it properly. So there are several uh, initiatives related to that. There's resources on here for parents and teachers. If you've, as a parent, this is one of my favorite websites. It's called Common Sense Media. Just go check that out. Just explore a little bit. Wonderful, wonderful resources. Schoology is a learning management system. I'm going to come back to Schoology in just a second. Our student learning portal that is pointed out to you. And then this initiative, um, your fundraising made me think of this. So we are a BYOD district. That means bring your own devices. We do not buy each child a device in the district. We instead or BYOD, or the way we like to brand it, BYOD, LT, because everything we do is LT. Okay? So it's bring your own learning technologies. So this is a little bit more about that, if you're interested. And, since you guys brought it up, we'll show and tell. This is the newest version of Chromebook that we purchased. So the ones that you were just referring to, this is what you bought. These are wonderful devices. We can basically buy two of these for every iPad. It's touch screen. It bends, so I can lay it on the table. Multiple kids work on it. And it, it's, it's reinforced on the edges, so it's child friendly. You can drop them. We prefer that don't drop them if you can. <laughs> um, they've got front facing cameras. They're just really wonderful tools. So if you're looking for a tool for your children, it's funny, every time I come home, my kid's like, I need your Chromebook. And we have Max, and we have all kinds of things around my house. They always want to use my Chromebook. <laughs> Part of the reason for that is because it is a Chrome. You see that little logo there? The reason it's so popular is because it is all cloud-based tool. So our other big initiative in the district is Google Apps for Education. So that's our next one down here. So the reason the students like to use this device is it automatically connects them to their Google Drive account, their Google Apps for Education account. And so they can do everything in the cloud, and no matter what device they're on, they can use that device to get their stuff. So my seventh grader, she likes to use her phone. She really doesn't need a tablet or this most of the time. She just likes to use her phone. She can get access to everything via that phone and Google Apps. So just a little plug there. And then I heard you had a couple of questions about Text Connect. So at the bottom of this page is a link to Text Connect and a training guide for parents as well. Okay? So that's on this page as well. Alright, so let me go back to school agent since that's why I'm here. The first question I always get, what is school agent? I like to 
answer, it is the digital backpack for this digital generation. Every child in the school brings a backpack to school. And in that backpack, what do you have? Somebody give me some answers. What do you have? Books? Tuesday folders? Homework? What else? Snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Announcements. Planners, maybe? Calendars? Okay. Schoology is just a digital version of that, in which we're helping the students learn the skills for using these, what they call LMS, or learning management systems, so that when they leave, graduate here as 12th graders, and they go to whatever college they go to, they're going to be using the learning management system. Most of them are using Blackboard or some derivative thereof. We chose Schoology, and when I say we, the teachers actually chose this. We formed a committee, we looked at several different products, the teachers put them through the vetting process, and they unanimously came back to me and said, this is the one we want. It's easy, but yet it's very powerful. But the whole point of this is to help the children and the teacher stay organized and to communicate with you, the parents. So that's where we're going. Okay, now this is new. Last year was our first official year to use Schoology. And it's a slow, soft rollout. This is year two. So it's still a soft rollout. We're teaching the teachers how to use this tool. And it's just slowly rolling. By next year, the initiative is, or the directive is, each teacher, instead of using their websites that you see when you go to these sites, I'm going to get out of here. Um, well, I don't want to get out of here, but you know what I'm talking about. If you go to their campus and they go to their teacher websites, well, those will basically go away. The teachers, that was another request. There's websites and there's Schoology. Please tell us one to use. Don't make us do both. It's double the work. Okay? So that's another reason we're moving towards Schoology, but doing it slowly. The teachers have until next fall to actually officially switch, make that complete switch. Okay? Another reason that we really wanted to decide on an LMS was for safety and security. When you create a website, anybody in the world can go and view that website. And they can go find information about the teacher, anything that's posted on that website they can find. Schoology forces the teacher, the students, and the parents to log in. And only the people that are in that course are allowed to see that content. So that was another reason we went this way. So on this page, you can see there are several things. There's a video tour. I'm going to show you just a little bit about what, what it looks like as a parent from my perspective. But if you want to get more details, this video right here is about five minutes. We'll give you some more details around what Schoology looks like for parents. Right below that, you'll see two different things. And this has been a, a point of confusion for a lot of people. Schoology, for the Lake Travis ISD, we have our own version of it. We have purchased an enterprise version that is only for our students and our teachers to use. If you're not a member of this district, you cannot use our, this version of Schoology. Parents are not part of that. Parents are outside of the district. So, if you're a parent, you have a different login. Okay, so when you go to this page, you'll see there's a login for parents and there's a login for students. They're two different websites. Okay, even though you see them, the same information. So I'm going to show you what it looks like as a parent. Now, I'm logging in as a student or a teacher because my two accounts are merged, my parent account, my teacher account are merged. So it's a little bit complicated for you to see what I see, which is why I gave that other link to the video. But I'm going to log in. Every student in the district has an account, K through 12. When they log in, they see this page. This is their home page. It's very Facebook-like. The two young gentlemen, I call them younger, in their 30s, early 30s, that created this were Stanford grads, and they used Blackboard, and they hated it, and they said, we're going to create something that users can actually use. So that's what they did. Um, so it's very Facebook-like. 
For a parent, though, I want to show you what it looks like as a parent. So I'm logged in right now as the administrator. Okay? I want to show you what it looks like for a parent. So I'm going to go to my parent account. And I've already added my children. But you can see here, I have two children. So this is another neat thing about Schoology. Once you get this set up, and I have a presentation that actually help you get it set up. As a parent, I can put, if I have six kids, I can put them all in here. I have two. I can put them all just right here in one place. So instead of visiting, I have my two kids between them. I can get 15 classes. So instead of visiting 15 websites, I can go to one, and I can choose what I want to see for each child in one place. Okay. So I can click on my high score, and I can see all of his courses. I can see his grades. I'm not going to talk about mastery right now. I can see all of his calendars. I can, in essence, in one place, see what's going on with my child. I can see upcoming events, all kinds of information in one place. They can see grades, but that's a great point. So back to Text Connect. Our official grade book is Text Connect. Right? That's where the official grades are kept. The grade books in Schoology are not the official grade book. So some teachers really use the gradebook to its fullest capacity, and then they, they import those grades into iText. Some do not. It, it really just depends. So don't rely on this for your official grades. I still check them for my kids. Yes, for the, for the foreseeable future, yes. You will always have some version of that, what they call the student information system. Um, so yes. Okay. But yes, great question. This is not the official grade book. So I switched to my daughter, and now I can see all of her classes, and I can see assignments that she has upcoming. I can see her calendar for what she has going on in her class. Now, if I click on this calendar, actually, let me go back. I want to show you my phone. This is wonderful. I can see everything that my child is doing in every single class in one place. For the teacher, it's wonderful because, let's say, I have this test set up for Friday and something happens. We have an assembly or fire alarm or whatever, and we can't do the test on Friday. That teacher will simply take this and drag it down to Monday and drop it in, and it updates the entire system, and it updates the student, and it updates the parent. Everybody gets its notification. You can get those notifications through the website. You can get them on your phone. You can get them on your iPad. You can get the notifications wherever you want them. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question. So here, uh, it's third through fifth grade uses planners, right? Annual planners. And the kids are allowed to use that for the They can, they can put stuff on their own calendar. They can, okay, yes. that's what I was curious about. Yes. But, but all this is being pulled in from what the teachers, what the teachers are right? putting in there, correct. Okay. And just so you know, we're at different stages of implementation yes. in our school. So you may have a teacher that is very schoology savvy and, and, and they utilize all of these pieces, or you may have one who's still in the beginning and that affects continuing learning. Right. It's not really mandated. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's kind of my question of like moving into this type of thing. Like, what what is going to keep this from just being one more thing we have to check? Like, you know, like if we still have to like when full implementation happens, it's often are all teachers required to have all assignments in there, and like who's checking up on that? Or do we still check a planner? I mean, my daughter's a first grader. I'm going to check that. Like. We still have to do that and that just to make sure we get both things. If I'm only looking at this, I might miss something because some teacher doesn't put, like, what's the implementation of the enforcement in place? It, just, like, it seems like this isn't going to be useful unless it's all in. Well, the, I don't want to have my kid have to write out their assignments if I know they're already in there. That defeats the purpose of having this, right? So, like, what's the enforcement? You've got to have both, but that's part of why this project, this is our third year in the project, our second official year. That's why we're going to a very slow rollout because teachers are very busy people, and this is a new paradigm shift for a lot of them. Um, so we're easing them into it. However, since we're taking their websites away from them, um, the sense of urgency is going to start ramping up and probably got January. They start realizing, oh, next fall I have to have this done. You're still going to have different gradations of how they use this. Um, it, it's, it is a learning process. So I would still say both. So this is a very, very vague overview of the parent interface. I don't want to go into details because, since, especially since I'm logged in as an administrator, I can see everything. Um, so I don't want to show you everything. Um, what I do want to show you though is back on this page on the website, this Schoology setup instructions. Let me show you this, and I'm just—I'm not going to show you this whole presentation, but I want to—I want to go through it and highlight a few things and then you can go back over this, especially next year when you're, this really goes live. Um, we talk about what a school would be, um, why we selected it, and then we actually get into how do you sign up. So some of you may have already done this, some of you maybe, maybe your teachers will start doing it in the spring or maybe they'll start next year. Who knows? But just so you know, I told you about the login for parents. It's different. And this is that login. You go to www.schoology.com. I don't know if you've seen, but your students, when they log in or the teachers log in, they go to like Travis.schoology.com. This is our enterprise version. So they're two separate links. Okay. The parent is given an access code, usually by the teacher at the elementary level, because they only have 20 to 25 students. So they will on back to school night, they will a lot of times print out either letters with instructions or strips and give each one of you your own unique parent access code. At the middle and high school levels, we automatically put the, the kids into their classes. Um, and then on their open house, they put them in. The neat thing about the parent access code is, let's say you have Johnny who's a kindergartner, and you put the access code to connect to Johnny, you don't have to do that one time for the entire career of Johnny. So when he graduates, you will, you'll still be connected to him. So you only put that in one time. That's nice. Here's what it looks like. You just click sign up and become a parent, put in the access code. When you put in the access code, it asks you for your name, your email. You create your account. And you can have multiple accounts. So you can have one for mom, one for dad. And you can have multiple accounts. Once you get in there, then you just start adding your children. So since I had two children, I went in there and I had to put another code for another child. So each child has their own unique code. Okay, but you only have to put it in one time for that child. And then this talks about what you can look at, what you can see as a parent. This is talking about what you can do, what I was just showing you. You can get all your calendars, you can message to the teacher. And I didn't show you this because I was hesitant to. Um, maybe I'll do this, I have, a, I have a demo class I can show you a little bit what it looks like. But it's really nice. You can check on what your student is doing in that class. You can see when they've turned in work, what discussions they're involved in. However, if it's, let's say it's a discussion between children, 
you cannot see the content that's posted by those other children. It's redacted. You can only see grades, assignments, input from your child for the laws and all that stuff. Um, here's what it looks like. I just showed you as a parent. There's all your dates, events, and things that look right. Any student activity or discussions they're involved in, any classes they belong to. Here's a discussion slide. On the <laughs> you can see this discussion. Um, you can filter. So I'm not going. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Here's that demo class I'll show you. So this is what a course can look like. So notice this is my blended Bearcat fourth grade course. I have different folders set up: one for math, one for ELA, one for science, one for digital citizenship. And in each of those folders, I can post resources. Whether it's links to games, to websites, to files I upload, anything I want to put in here, I can put in here and store it and have it as a resource that the students have access to, but you also have access to. So you can help the children. Then I'll run right and see the calendar of what's coming up on it and get stuff. Here's the calendar I just showed you again. One calendar, all classes. Obviously, the elementary, you don't have to worry about that. And then there's troubleshooting and the cues. There's parent guides. Um, you can call our help desk if you need help. So lots and lots of resources out there to get you started because it can be a little bit overwhelming for our generation. Let me show you real quick. Let me go back to my work account and just let you see what a student sees. So here's my demo class that I've created for elementary. And so here's all the folders, and inside of these folders, just as I was referring to a minute ago, I can put all kinds of content. So in mine, I wanted the kids to start off the year. Well, what's a meerkat? Well, let's talk about it. And so I created this fun little discussion with the kids saying, well, let's go learn what is a meerkat. What do they do? So you click on it and you can watch the video and then they come back and they talk about it. How are we going to operate? What are going to be our norms in the class for the year? But it's a blended model. You're extending the learning opportunities for the kids. And I can tell you, my daughter who's now in seventh, when she was in fifth grade, that was our first year, her teacher was one of our pilot teachers. Um, and they rolled out school for their class. It was uh, social studies. And the excitement that the children generate around the knowledge that they get to create and co-create using Google Apps and Schoology and the discussions that they would have were very, very rich for fifth graders. Um, and what the teachers found out to do is that um, they found out about this updates thing. And so teachers can, each night, see my kindergarten teachers, this is all they do. At the end of the day, they gather the kids on the carpet and say, what are we learning today? And the kids just start talking, what are we learning? And the teacher sits there and records what they did. Some things. And then some of them learn to take pictures, to videos. Here's what I learned today. Here's what I did today. And they send that update. And who gets that? You do. And so the teachers tell me that even at that kindergarten level, the discussions that night become not, what did you do in school today? In blank stairs. <laughs> Instead it was, I see that Ms. Richards came to your class today and you did a, an exercise on whatever. And the discussions they tell me are much, much richer. Just for that one simple lap. But what the kids did in my daughter's class, and you're seeing, I see this in, my, in her seventh grade classes now, if kids have a question or they're not clear on something, they post an update. And many times before the teacher has time to reply, another student has replied with the answer that the students were looking for. So it's kids empowering kids, and it's very powerful. But it's in a safe, contained environment where only the members of that class have access to it. So you can see I have my daughter in the class, and then one of the instructional coaches. One thing real quick. There's my daughter, and then you can see I'm attached to her. That's me. I have an account attached to her, and following her all the way up from high school. So it's really, really nice. They can earn badges. They can do all kinds of really fun things that help engage them. Yes?
That's an important point. How do we keep parents from not loving in as their children? It's impossible not to. It's impossible to keep parents from looking over the shoulder of their children. But so what we're asking children will look at all this Yes. So what we're asking our parents to do is please use your parent access code to see your children's work and really focus on your children. Do you have access code for all your children? Uh, no, you will have a different access code for each child. So I had two kids, so I had at two different campuses, so I had two codes. But I only ended up coding one time to match That's mine. just a setup. That's, That's just a setup of the account. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So once you do that, you never have to do it again. Okay. So until a teacher is using this and gives us an access code like that, we're just right. going to do it. But yes. we get our first access code from a teacher, then Then you know that teacher is using it to a certain extent. Because only in our middle and high schools did we actually import every child create classes for every teacher and therefore every parent has access or has the potential for access. So likely next fall, right? Like the teacher's here. That's something we'll have to talk about with the principals. It's it's it, it's almost a harder management piece for us to do that for the elementary. It's almost easier just for you guys to do that. It's almost a harder management piece for us to do that for the elementary. It's almost easier just for each teacher because they have a much smaller, smaller audience for them to put the kids in themselves and then give the code to the parents. Then we'll get the code from each teacher. So will it still be the same? Like, so I'm a fourth grader. You won't have to worry about it. If, you, if your fourth grader is already connected, you won't have to worry about it. Okay, it's not that. Okay, then. And then if he, he connects it, and then I won't have to worry about the fifth grade then. Correct. Yes. Okay. Once they're in, they're in until they graduate. And I apologize if I missed this. When are, when is there a TH going to be next fall? Next fall is when we're. That's what we're going to get code. That's the directive for everybody. The middle and high schools, yeah, the middle and high school, the middle schools and high school are already using it. But even then, it's two different levels. But the directive is yes, the next one. Some of our, uh, we ran a pilot program with that last year. Some of our uh, teachers that were in the forefront of schools, either the ones I'm always asking, push us a little further and help us. And so we had some teachers do that, where when you clicked on their name on the school wires website, it took you directly to their school team. Um, we're not going to do that anymore. Okay. We're letting those teachers do that for now, but as of next year, everybody will have to log in. Okay. Students, teachers, parents, everybody will have to log in. Anything else? I know it's a lot, but we get there. It's a good thing. Bear with us. Thank you. Some teachers are already using it, yes. So if they want to share those codes, you might just ask your teacher, are they using school as you think I get a code? I know it's right. That's, that's a lot. Lily, darling.
Carl, can you stay if anybody has any like, quick questions because we're going to wrap up now. So in order to find us, West Cypress Hills PTO, it, look us, like us and follow us on Facebook. Don't worry more about Facebook. Like us and follow us because it will come back up on your thread easier. Um, subscribe to our website. You will get updates. It comes over as WordPress right now. I'm working on it. I have my poor neighbor. She did, is doing it kind of pro bono for me. Um, changing. And Megan Klein is our website guru. And she, you know, we're all volunteers. We really do so much. So she's trying to change it from WordPress to say WCHPTO. She tried something and it didn't work last night. So she was very upset this morning. So she's working on it. So right now, if it comes over to WordPress, it is a PTO update of our website. But subscribe to it because we did load the nutrition video. We loaded um, also the link to buy t-shirts. It's going to be an all, all year. You can buy t-shirts all year. So any new students that come in, you can go on the website. T-shirts, sweatshirts, we're going to add new products. We'll let you know. We're talking about maybe doing some gym shorts with WCH on them. Some just different products, just mixing it up a little bit. Um, and then Tiger Talk. We're trying to put everything in one place for everybody. I'm trying. Because, you know, we get, we get information in so many different levels right now. Tiger Talk is where you'll find most of the PTO information if it's not on our website. But please go to our website. You'll get the updates whenever anything comes through. You'll get on there. But there's a lot of information. And then on Facebook, you can get Facebook updates. Okay. And then if anybody wants to stay and learn a little bit more about Text Connect, I can walk you through a little bit about Text Connect if you're, you're having problems logging on. If not, does anybody have any other questions? Yes. It will tell you what you need to be like. No, you're just really with the room parent duties, it's more about getting the, um, the class parties pulled together about it and things like that for the holidays. So, you know. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And we'll be here to ask questions. The PTO is here to ask. Feel free to ever email us. Our emails are all on our website. Don't ever hesitate to talk to one of the PTO members and we'll get you. If you don't know the answer, we'll find the answer. You know, so we're, we're here for, for all of you to help out. And then, oh, we've got to do raffle, Carl. You get to choose. <laughs> Rhonda, woohoo! Happy birthday! Okay, and then it, we're going to adjourn at um, 9.55. Thank you all for coming.